Well, finally, we made it to trees. We get to, get to reminisce and talk about the days when you were painting like a maniac here at trees on a weekly basis, right? You were painting every yeah. week. Yeah. It was a good, I think, four year, maybe five year run. Uh, I guess pretty much right after they opened, Clint asked me if I could do what I was doing over at Curtain Club, but without the broken edges, because he didn't want to have the, the same, you know, you know, interior look. He didn't want to feel like he was stealing the, the vibe, I guess, or the uh, decor. So, yeah, I did uh, a lot of touring acts here. Hey, Lonnie, I know yeah, I yeah, Kalani, and then, uh, 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 Didn't you do uh, Post Malone? Yeah, I did do Post Malone. I also did one of the <laughs> Jonas Brothers, but... Uh, oh, the, F.K. Twigs? Yeah, F.K. Twigs, good God. That was beautiful. I remember beautiful. seeing her when I dropped off the painting and going, like, hey, so, Co, are we dating now? Uh, no. <laughs> no, I left her alone. Trees was uh, opened, and uh, back then, Lyles was involved, of course. Uh, it, it was sort of a weird thing. It was like a switch over between Lyles and it was Big Steve and uh, the shows I saw here, I mean, Tenderloin, how many Reverend Horton Heat shows, how many Tripping Daisy shows, how many... If, if I went through the whole list, I guess I'd just have to go through the most memorable. And, uh, I mean, especially when I was booking bands, I would I'd be putting them in there and I would see them play here like 50 times. But there was one night I drove in with a friend to see the Breeders, just Kim Deal from the Pixies solo project, and I was a huge fan of the Pixies and of course the Breeders. And I came in, and it was a uh, Simo. That's who his, his name was. And he knew I did Fry Street Fair and that I was competent and that I could do uh, the booking and you know when all the uh, deal with bands and not be starstruck and bother them and whatnot. And he said, uh, okay, but I really need some help. I said, what? Because I was there with, oh, like with a date. He said, I need someone to hold Kim Deal's monitor while the show's playing. I'm like, you, you need me to do what? He said, like, I need you to get on stage and just stand in front of Kim Deal and hold her monitor so when people are stage diving, because you're going to do that, it, it doesn't get knocked off. And I said, Will you run me beers? And like, if I can get through the crowd, I'll run you a beer. And I was like, fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I stood, stood on the ground in front of Kim Deal while she played her set. I just kept looking up, just happy as a lark. Yeah, it was, a, it was one of those weird things. Like even my date, even though we didn't get to hang out, was like impressed. It's like, you got to hang out? And it's like, yeah, I sat below Kim Deal all night while she played guitar and sang. This club had a lot of the really cool shows. I mean, when you think about how long it's been open, it, how many times have the local greats played here, like the old 97s and uh, Tripping Daisy, I keep saying that, but those shows would always sell out. You know, there'd be 800 people in here. Uh, then there were the road shows, which uh, Radiohead played here uh, right when they broke. Uh, and uh, we didn't make it in on that one, but bands like the Causey Way and Tenderloin and uh, Captured by Robots and Man or Astro Man. I mean, there were just, you just had the Orbit Room over there sort of doing the same billing, but um, this room was just so much more massive um, in the sense that you had the balconies and, and the sound. I've been in this room over a thousand times. 1001. Which one do you think you came to more, here or the Curtain Club? Here. Like, this is actually where I uh, met my wife. <laughs> it was during a baboon paper chase and... Uh, oh, shit. Who else was on that bill? But the, everybody was closing, so, you know, they weren't chasing us out because they knew me and they knew my friends. And um, I picked her up and I tried to put her on the stage and I dropped her. Because <laughs> I was drunk and she was drunk. She landed on her head. This is the moment when I found a reason to give her, give her my phone number, which was by injuring her grievously in front of everybody and embarrassing the shit out of myself. Now she's waiting for me at home with our 12-year-old daughter. <laughs> Look, there's the hallway, headbang.
Well, I mean, the layout of this place has not changed. This is how it was. I mean, of course, you've got, instead of a wooden wall here, you've got uh, steel, but um, yeah, they, they, when they added the whole balcony and up there, that used to be a sound booth up there. And if you were well known and it was a cr crowded show, you could go in there and set it with, uh, oh, I don't know, whoever was running lights that night and just drink in there and have your own little private booth. And I remember I came to watch the Toadies Rubberneck CD release party up there on New Year's Eve, New Year's Eve again. Just got this thing in the mailer and it was slammed. And so I took my date again up there and great show, of course. I mean, one night I drove in from Denton. I remember when Nirvana broke and uh, they'd already booked here. So the venue was fucking slammed. I mean, they should have been over at a different, much bigger room that would hold 5,000 people. And uh, we were just standing there watching this huge, just massive crowd of people wanting in. And we were like, we ain't doing that. Yeah, this is where Turner and uh, Kurt got into it. This is the club it occurred at. And he evidently had had a little bit of a meltdown. Probably not able to find a fix. and put his guitar right through the soundboard, just took it head first. And so the venue was not happy with him, plus the crush of people outside wanting to get in. And in the video, you can see him crowd surfing, and Turner gives him a couple of shoves in the face when he's about to get back on stage, so he hits him with his guitar. And you know, when you have a guitar strap, you have a little button in the end of your guitar that ripped Turner's face open, so Turner started beating the shit out of him. And Courtney Love said she was gonna stop by here when she came in town to find the guy that beat up her husband after he was gone. But this is the infamous club where Kurt Cobain was beaten up. Uh, the backstage area up there, um, the bar hasn't changed much at all since Craig Duplois was here. And all. But yeah, I also worked the door here for I think five months. And uh, that was interesting because to see that many people just standing out. People would go out to smoke a cigarette and then wouldn't let, we weren't allowed to let them back in because of the capacity. And I had to be the guy to say that to somebody. No ins, no outs. People don't like that. When they, I mean, I could see a lot of bands on the wall that I painted that I guess came through again. And that's what they switched to, was having just these vinyl prints done. I mean, a lot of these paintings were painted in a day. Um, Doug would usually tell me, for Curtain Club, he would usually tell me a few weeks out, if not a couple months out. Uh, but Clint always would wait to see how the show was selling. Then let me know at the last minute, hey, I need this by tomorrow, or sometimes I need it by tonight. And I would be at the gin building or at my prior studio, and I would just sit down and start laying out the colors. And that's when I had to switch from oils to acrylics, because oils take too long to dry. And that's when I started doing a lot more color. Because you'll notice all the Curtain Club ones are not in color. And these are all watercolor, ink, acrylic, you know, whatever I could do. And I had a lot uh, more freedom. I mean, even without not being allowed to break up the edges, I was able to take liberties with some of the photos. But yeah, the Ace Freely one came out really good. I think I painted that in a day. I mean, it was literally like one of those moments where you go, you know, you're pretty good at this. Uh, why aren't you, why, why don't you have your own home? <laughs> why, why, can't, why are you struggling? <laughs> a lot of these I would just switch over to something that would dry quickly, unless you let me know uh, a ways out. But a Silver Sun pickup, it's Black Flag. Yeah, there's Nick Jonas. Um, I put these under protective plastic because at Curtain Club they did like to write on the paintings. The funniest thing I ever saw was a guy that was smiling and I noticed he had two chiclets glued to his teeth. And I had to do a double take because I saw the shading and it was gum stuck on his smile. Um, the Toadies, I remember that one. So that's 2009. So that puts it back, you know, 12 years. I think I did 
maybe 40. And, that, and then I'll go home and look at my file and there's 70 pictures in there. I remember I was so burned out that I was painting a painting and Kelly came in and I was, I was throwing my brushes at the painting. She's like, what are you doing? You're ruining it. He said, I'm fucking just burned the fuck out. I don't want to fucking paint another fucking portrait. And then the next day I repaired it you know, and delivered it and calmed down. And those were uh, years that really, it was sort of like, if you ever were put in a Marine, like you're gonna be a Navy SEAL, but you're gonna be a painter instead. They're waking you up and they're throwing you in cold water, they're dropping you in the middle of the ocean and you have to figure shit out. Those 11 years were just the boot camp of art. I mean, if somebody wanted me to paint something nowadays, I wouldn't second guess. You know, if they handed me a portrait, I want a photo, they said I want it to look like just like this, I'll go, well, if you're patient with me, it, it will look just like this, and color or black and white. And that's what was funny, was when I was doing black and white all the time, and then when I decided that I needed to do color for either a client or for one of the venues, the color just came out. It was like, uh, wow, I can paint in color and I didn't even know it. it. And it was the patience. It was the, I know I need to put the dark browns in first and then the, you know, the dark blues and work from there out. Even though I was using acrylic, which you can't blend or play with much before it's dry. And that's when I started bringing in the inks and the washes and everything and it all clicked. My career probably wouldn't be what it is today and the, definitely the amount of people that saw my work just coming through the club, the amount of work I was forced to do and literally, like literally forced to do it instead of when I wanted to, I had to get it done. And I had to be, it had to be there and dry by the show and for the band to sign and all that while also doing it for the other venues, as I've said before, it's a lot of work, but ultimately worth it.